All right. Thank you. This is a man-made substance. It's called plutonium-238. One pound of it costs $4 million, not including startup costs to build the reactor in the first place. It's used in weapons, in interstellar exploration, in medicine, and it's apparently what they make the AWS managed NAT gateways out of because holy God are those things expensive. <laughs> this is, and I am not kidding, this is not a shit post, how data transfer gets billed in AWS. I put a picture in the Slack team so I don't feel you have to panic to take pictures of this. I have seen this picture printed out and hung in cubicles at AWS offices in Seattle because they don't know the answers either. It's great. Let's move on, we're on a time budget. This is the AWS Snow Cone. It holds up to 14 terabytes of data, has an e-ink display, weighs four and a half pounds, and has to be plugged in at all times to work, meaning that this is without a doubt the absolute shittiest Amazon Kindle e-reader that they have ever made, much less shipped. You rent it by the month. Which means that at that point, you figure out its cost on a new pricing dimension. It's not that economical when viewed through a lens of gigabyte pound months, which is, sure, admittedly a ridiculous way to price it. But is it any more ridiculous than the way that Amazon already prices all of their things? No, my friends, it is not. This is the famous Schrodinger's cat thought experiment, or an illustration thereof. A cat is placed in a box alongside an overcomplicated device, probably made out of lambda functions. It has a 50% chance of triggering and killing a cat during a particular time window. Until you open the box and observe the cat, there are two cats. One is alive, one is dead. Then you open the box, observe the cat, the quantum waveform collapses into one of two states, and finally you are billed $400 in Amazon CloudWatch fees for having dared to observe something. <laughs> I'm Corey Quinn, and I am the chief cloud economist at the Duckbill Group. What the hell is a cloud economist? Well, I'm a lot of things in case you hadn't picked up on that, so let me instead tell you what I believe. Uh, I believe that finance and engineering need marriage counseling because they both care about the same things and want the same things, but are great at talking completely past one another. I am the cat eating the flowers in this particular analogy. <laughs> finance doesn't usually care about people spending too much money on AWS. They care about predicting it and making sure that they expect what the charges are going to be. Cloud finance is an engineering problem. It is not a finance problem. Along that axis, I also believe that cloud cost and architecture are one and the same in the world of cloud. I was quoted in this presentation this morning from an AWS thing and was only told after the fact because I'm right. We are a bunch of engineers who just happen to speak finance, not the other way around. I also believe that if I'm going to rip you off, I should do a really good job of it and not try and do the small parts along the way. And that means a lot. It means that our conflict of interest avoidance is intense. We only ever do fixed fee work, for example. We do not bill by the hour because it will take forever. And we don't charge a percentage of savings because then we'll tell you to delete your backups, which while entertaining is probably not in your best interest. We do no implementation work. We are purely advisory. We are not going to touch your production code. If you've ever seen my code, you can thank me later for that. We also have no partners, because when we recommend you do something or don't use something, it's because it's what we believe, not because we're getting money to say that or not say that. We also believe that humans make pretty shitty computers out of themselves, but foundationally, that understanding, predicting, and understanding AWS spend requires human beings assisted by software, not the other way around. Computers and also a disturbing number of engineers miss business context completely and make poor choices as a result. That's why we're here as a consultancy and not trying to sell you software that doesn't work. We also believe that we can't teach how scale works. That's why we have a bunch, that's why we don't have new graduates. We only have senior people who know what they're doing because we built things at scale, usually badly, and learn from the experience. That's why we teach people through experience rather than doing it by a case study. Speaking of case studies, our clients love us and say nice things. This is one of my favorite quotes, my favorite quotes, no less so because it comes from charity majors of Honeycomb. Those people are smart. They know what they're doing. Their entire team does. And this is why we focus just on AWS, because we are actually good at doing this one thing almost to an obsessive degree, which makes us socially unpleasant, but very good at this. <laughs> Honeycomb, Instana, New Relic, three companies that were here this week have all been our reference customers. A bunch more have also been kind enough to let us invoke their names when talking about what we do. What we do is effectively three things. 
We optimize your bills by exhaustive in-depth analysis. We find, the, we find the savings and predict your future. We negotiate with AWS on your behalf in hilarious and fun ways that they mostly enjoy. And of course, we will spend half a day with your team just laying waste to your bill and being astonishingly funny as we go. If you're still here and listening to me, great. Come to Momo's tonight at 7 o'clock. We're hosting a drink up. If you have nothing better to do, we'll be entertaining and fun. I'm Corey Quinn of the Duckbill Group, and I cede the remainder of my time to the representative from Date a Dog. Take it away.